my soccer universe and welcome to what happened over the at, over at the Iberian Peninsula last uh, week. It would have been uh, time to pause, but I have had to say with the Spanish Cup final being such a great game with so many feel-good stories, especially if you're on the green side of Seville, uh, I think it's worth to do that video and I'm, although I usually avoid, I'm wearing Betis, yes I have the fourth shirt from last season. Um, first off, I gotta say I really loved the uh, cup final shirt. I really love this shirt. I know it has a little crook uh, 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 around the crest and the good news is um, it, you can get it still on pre-order in a regular fit at the Betis store. So, um, you know, thinking, 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 thinking about it. But yeah, uh, for me, uh, this video is mostly about the cup final because this was a great final with the only uh, downer, the kick of time at 10 uh, in the evening, which is just, uh, yeah. I made the mistake, <laughs> no, made the mistake. I mean, I watched it, but I it, it, it was almost one o'clock when it finished. And so uh, I had a little bit of effect on me <laughs> for something. Let's put it that way. Uh, but also in La Liga, we had quite some interesting results, uh, especially Rayo having an, ep an excellent week. Another jersey that I really would love to have, uh, by the way, as well as Athletic Club. You see, my Spanish mind is going crazy there and I have not even uh, bought so, as many Dutch jerseys. But I think especially in the relegation battle, there were quite, quite a few things. And then, of course, we have to talk about uh, the semi-train wreck that is Barcelona again. We thought Barcelona had cut the corner. No, absolutely not. They are in trouble, losing now three home games in a row. Yes, they won in between at Real Sociedad. And yes, one was not in the same competition, but it never had happened before that within one season, Barcelona lost three home games in a row. That's pretty remarkable stuff, I uh, gotta say. In Portugal, we have the expected cup final and maybe, 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 maybe we have a title race. No, we don't. We don't. But Porto have been losing uh, a local derby. And so um, uh, it is a little bit tight out of the sporting in a way, uh, securing their spot in next year's Champions League. I would say we'll start in Seville with the uh, cup final. As I said, the only downer was that it was so late. This was, as far as finals go, probably one of the best finals that I have seen in a long time up and down, two very even teams going for it, really putting it all on, on, the, on the pitch. Yes, early on, Betis definitely was a little bit more uh, dominant team, having all the ball possession, uh, making nice moves and getting then uh, the 1-0 or in the 30th minute for Borja Iglesias. Uh, but, you know, at that point, and uh, then Valencia, and, you know, and other stories, I think um, Bordalas is would have been the first coach born in in or around Valencia to lead Valencia to a, to a title just because of it there will be other stories for Betty so this would have been in many ways a feel-good final anyway and it was a real feel-good final because, because it was a great it was a great final and the way Moriba then sets up Hugo Duro to get the equalizer suddenly the game was really really level at the half it was an absolute, yes, Betis had more of the ball, but Valencia was very well and uh, pushing against. And at the beginning of the second half, uh, Valencia, you really thought that Valencia is going to take the lead there uh, because they were very, very, very dominant at that point, having uh, two, if not three, relatively good chances. I mean, uh, one uh, for sure that had to be in. Uh, but then the longer the half went on, it actually went in the other way towards... Um, uh, towards Betis, who then I think Borja Iglesias had a, a brilliant assist uh, in 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 the last ten minutes, uh, uh, setting a player for uh, in front of goal. Then there was another one. I think uh, both teams hit the uh, woodwork uh, at that time, and then very very late on, uh, uh, Soler probably uh, could have won it for Valencia as, as as well. So really really exciting stuff. The problem is the players went so all out that the team's tired and you could see this first half of extra time again Valencia a little bit better than uh, Betis come 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 back second half of uh, extra time you could you you kind of could see the writing on the wall there was not much energy left and was even worse uh, I thought for Betis was that um, 
all their penalty takers, their regular penalty takers, have been taken off because they were just flat. <laughs> it was uh, it, it was really uh, Juan me uh, uh, had to be on because um, Joaquin K K on Borja Iglesias uh, for we we and Jose Sergio Canales now now Abel Fake all had to come off. And those are your, your secure, but they could not do it anymore. And with all the, I mean, uh, the, it's kind of, kind of amazing that Betis made only one change in uh, regulation, the 86 million when Joaquin King came out. And then uh, between the 102nd and the 111th, they made five more changes, really trying to push Valencia. However, Valencia then more or less retreated into their own uh, uh, half and kind of kept the uh, game, game, game level and there was not much energy left in the game. I also thought, uh, ahead of the penalty shoot, that I thought because of that all the uh, regular penalty takers for Betis were out that and also for, by Claudio Bravo not being the greatest goalkeeper anymore, I really had a feeling that uh, the only way that Betis are gonna win it, and that was for 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 bowling, is if one of the Valencia players doesn't hit the goal. I didn't think that Claudio Bravo could save it. And uh, the penalty shoot should have really started well for Valencia. I mean, they uh, won the toss, so they go first, which is usually an ad advantage. And all the first three penalties were excellent penalties. Absolutely, especially the one from Carlos Soler, I think was really, 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 really good. The worst penalty up until that point was definitely won by, by uh, Joaquin, of all people. But then Jonas Musa uh, steps, steps up and misses the goal. And at that point, and when uh, Teo makes it uh, emphatically 4-3, I think the writing was on the wall and Gaia, one of the last, you know, um, the problem with Valencia is that they might actually lose quite some, some, some players because they need, 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 need to make, make money. And so a squad that is kind of having just around 10th, um, maybe could have made it in, in, into Europe, will again implode. And this is the trouble uh, in Valencia at the moment. Gaia then equalizes and it's down to Miranda, who as a boy and a, a burning uh, Betis fan, saw the last triumph in 2005 in the stadium. I heard it was his first game in the stadium, which I cannot quite believe. If it was, it would have been even nicer. He is the one who steps up and he admitted afterwards that he was basically crapping his pants because this is just so, 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 so big and I've never seen. He converts the penalty. He's not even running away. He's just breaking down right there for his club. He won the second, uh, the th no, it was the fourth ever, um, third or fourth call cock of the race. In any case, it's a long time for a club with as many fans as Betis to have uh, ridiculously little trophies. Uh, but that is all down to the uh, big do dominance by the by Real Madrid and Barcelona. Betis is definitely a team that should have uh, more trophies in many, many ways. So that to me was one of the nicest stories. Another nice story is, of course, that um, uh, the coach, now the name doesn't, uh, doesn't come there, the coach finally wins a title in Spain. Uh, he was actually chased out of Real Madrid and didn't have a good re re reputation, but he really, really worked this uh, squad very well. Um, and then, of course, the big one is Joaquin, the only ever Betis player in his history to win two trophies with, with the club. He won. A Copa del Rey in 2005, where then, of course, on in, in, in Instagram, all the pictures with him at the wedding, at his own wedding, having the trophy there. And now he lifts it as a captain. So uh, absolutely a great story, great final. Despite it being so late, it was thoroughly enjoyable. Although maybe if one would have been smart, uh, you just watch it in the morning when you get up because it was that good. It really, it, it's even worth, worth a rewatch. Re I, I would say the first, uh, the, the regulation plus the first half of extra time were a really, really, really good game. Ah, and one last story. Hector Bejarin, Arsenal player, went on loan. He didn't go on loan to a big club. No, he went to the club where his father is a fan of. So, I mean, it's just a feel-good final. Very well worth uh, your, your time and very well worth the junk of this video. And as, as I said, I'm very happy that Betis won it. I think they deserved it a tad. To me, at least, I felt that, uh, you know, for the overall 
season end to end and, and, and so on. There was a little bit more credit with Betis winning it. Although there is the slight thing, you know, there was a, a Seville Derby in the round of 16 where the Betis fans threw some stuff and blah, blah, blah. It was not all that pretty. However, other than that, uh, Betis is having an excellent season. I really would love if they could finish top four because they are absolutely deserving of that. More so than other teams that have more means. And for that reason, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Betis this season. Um, yes, I do feel a little bit sorry for Valencia, especially with the back, back, background that this team is, gets blown up again because they need to make money. And Valencia is another absolutely massive club in Spain that should be playing much, much higher ownership. The big problem there. Uh, let's move over to the midweek round. We're doing a little bit in reverse this, this time in every way because we do first a cup final, then we go to La Liga, then we go to Portugal. I usually start with Port Portugal, but you know. All about Betis this time around. Um, the uh, the midweek round didn't watch too much, to be honest, because my focus was elsewhere, uh, namely the Premier League and Serie A. But, oh no, Coppa Italia in that sense. But we had, of course, the uh, Derby della Comunidad between Villarreal and Valencia, where Villarreal uh, actually steamrolled Valencia. Dan Yuma scoring the 10th and the 17th, it could have been more. Uh, what I still do not get, yes, I do not like yellow against white matchups. But I think the yellow submarine can play against the Valencia team uh, and both play in their home jerseys. I don't, and this red Valencia jersey, I just don't get. Just pull the just pull thing out of there. But we are all showing what a good team they can be. And on top of that, while Liverpool was also playing on Tuesday against Manchester United, they had to play the Derby against Everton, and now they have to then, then play against Villarreal again, whereas Villarreal have a, a full week to prepare. And the same goes for Real Madrid, who got a relatively easy win at Osasuna, you know. Uh, just doing the minimum, uh, Alaba, Asensio, uh, and uh, who... Um, uh, and Lucas uh, scoring the goals. Benzema missed two penalties in the 52nd and the in the 59th. That, I think, is also remar uh, remarkable. And I have to say that uh, Budimir, former Lask player, uh, made it 1-1 uh, right after Alaba scored the opener. But, you know, overall, it was an easy win for Real Madrid. Rayo getting a pretty big win at Espanyol, uh, starting their Barcelonese week, which uh, turned out to be super, super successful. Um, Granada, also in the relegation battle, uh, get a very vital point uh, at Atletico Madrid. However, it uh, doesn't count as much because Real Mallorca already beat Deportivo Alaves, putting a lot of pressure on Granada. Granada is probably a team uh, more on the down than on the up. Uh, it's got to be said. Uh, who else is in there? Cardiff could get, get, get dragged in there with a 3-2 loss uh, to Bilbao, although they won at the uh, Camp 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 now, so I don't think they will uh, get really in, 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 into trouble. And um, Sevilla, ever when, whenever I watch, I, I don't watch them, they score many, many goals, a 3-2 win at Levante. So at that point, yeah, Cardiff is uh, also, also, so it's Mallorca, Cardiff, Granada was there, but we have to talk also about then the makeup game that happened uh, on Sunday, where Rayo went to the Camp Nou and beat Barcelona 1-0 uh, with an early goal. Uh, out there, I mean, Barcelona had won midweek uh, at Real Sociedad, thanks to Obeyango, but uh, Garcia in the seventh minute. And then it was not that it is, um, Rayo was all super defensive. Yes, they of course tried every trick in the book to pass the time. And yes, the referee tried his best to give Barcelona as much time as possible. I think it was 30 minutes added on time in the second half which was uh, rather ridiculous. But on the other side, you know, the way uh, Rayo have been way, it's kind of pro, pro, pro fair. However, it also got to like say that a uh, Barcelona team without Pedri is not worth your time. And we go from Messi dependencia to Pedri dependencia in many ways. Uh, this is not the, 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 the finished article yet. All the changes and so on, it didn't look good what Bar Bar Barcelona was doing. Yes, they probably would have deserved the, e the equalizer, but uh, the shots they took, I mean, I saw later on when, when, Dem when Dembele actually has a pretty good shooting ball position and he punts the ball up in the stands in many, many ways. So, uh, Champions League qualification Still rather safe, to be honest, but um, it it should be much, much easier. But this time, uh, you would have thought, especially a month ago, the way Barcelona were rolling, as long as Petri were, were playing, that they should have sealed that deal. 
No, absolutely not. Um, in the Kirk and Sandy is still, I mean, uh, they have a six point cushion to Betis. Uh, Betis only a four point cushion to Atletico Madrid. So Bet, uh, Barcelona Sevilla are uh, now on 63. Real Madrid more or less there with the title. I mean, it's five games to go and they have now a 15 point lead. So um, one more point and the Real Madrid are the fact, are also uh, mathematically champ champions, although with the goal difference also of superior. You can already give the title to Real Madrid in many, many ways. Uh, Rayo, they were a little bit in danger the way they, are, they were trying to go down, but with those two, two, two wins, they suddenly lift themselves out of the danger and the four, um, with 40 points. And as I say, it's not down on the bottom. Uh, Mallorca, Cadiz, uh, Granada are the three teams where one of them will have to go down. Uh, and Mallorca is really fighting tooth and nail. Um, and I think it's between the two Andalusian sides, to be honest, if you ask me. Um, if we look at the Euro, the European, I think Betis and Rasos are relatively safe in their Europa League spots. I mean, uh, Betis already have the Europa League with the cup, the cup win. And so uh, Villarreal uh, will probably get the Conference League spot that they awaited last time around by winning the Europa League. Can they do it again? That's the big question. Um, very briefly, Portugal, as I said, we have the cup final that everyone expected between Porto and Tondela. Uh, Porto winning 1-0 over Sporting uh, and Mafra and Tondela 1-1, but you know, that was already from the first leg, uh, pretty much a done deal. And everything but a Porto win would be a surprise. And then uh, over the round, I think the big results came. I mean, Benfica nil nil against Farm Family Car is not noteworthy, but Braga beating Porto yesterday evening. And then Sporting going also to uh, Porto. They had, um, they had a Porto week. They um, first playing in Porto uh, at FC Porto and now Boavista, uh, winning 3 nil, closing the gap to um, just six points. But you know, it's three games to go. That's enough. Uh, Porto will win the, the, that league. I think uh, in Portugal, everything 1, 2, 3, 4 is rather well set. And yeah, with that, I'm going to end the video. Please let me know what you thought about the happenings this league. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.